just click that subscribe button. Today I just want to talk to you about snakes and feelings and emotions and what are they capable, what are they not capable of. Um, also, how I feel versus how maybe other people feel. First of all, everyone has the right to feel however they want and you can challenge that, you can express it, but we should never be uh, dealing with absolutes because there are no absolutes. Every person is different, every snake can be different. So for me to say, oh, snakes don't like that, like maybe your snake doesn't like that, that doesn't mean that everyone's snake doesn't like that and to assume that would be ridiculous. For example, I like getting massaged. Does that mean I want anyone and everyone to massage me? No, maybe yes, mostly. I think I'd like a massage for most people, but some people maybe not. And that's just how I feel. There are some people out there who probably would like a massage from anyone anytime, and there's probably other people that just, you know, wouldn't feel comfortable with a massage from anyone at any time. So the same way that people feel differently about different things, people like different tastes, different flavors, one person's favorite isn't everyone's favorite. The same thing goes for snakes. Every single snake has a different personality. Every single snake likes some things and dislikes some things. Some snakes, I truly believe, enjoy being handled. Some snakes do not enjoy being handled. And uh, some snakes enjoy interaction. Some snakes don't. Some snakes like to hide all the time. Some snakes like to be outside all the time. Some snakes are more shy. Some snakes are more aggressive. Some snakes can be scared. Some snakes can be not scared at all. Some snakes, they seem to genuinely be interested in what you are doing. When it comes to what I, what I like to say, and this is my theory, it may not be fact, it may not be true, this is how I feel. I say that snakes are not capable of complex emotion. So snakes do not love, snakes do not hate. And that's okay, that's the thing that I kind of like about them the most, because it means that they're not really going to hold a grudge against me, although some snakes are a little bit more intelligent and they can remember negative experiences. But what I mean is, like, a snake doesn't lay in its home thinking, oh my goodness, when is he going to come take me out? Oh, I miss him. I haven't seen him in a long time. The way, like, a dog would be like, when are you going to get home? Are you going to come play with me? No, they're not really like that. But they do definitely like certain things and they definitely don't like certain things. So you see the difference between hating something and disliking something and loving someone and liking something. They're, they're totally different. Liking is a lot more simple. So yes, a snake can enjoy coming out. If you were to take a snake every day at 6 p.m. and every day you come home, 6 p.m., I'm gonna take out my snake, that snake will be waiting for you at 6 p.m. most likely after it's gotten into that schedule and it'll want you to take it out. Okay, Avery news update. Avery is finally starting to use her toilet to go pee. Today's like her second time doing it, so it's very exciting. She still hasn't made a poop, but hopefully it'll happen soon, so yay. Um, back to what I was saying. So, let's say every day you came home at 6 p.m. and you picked up your snake, your snake would get used to that, and is it just a schedule? Does the snake have no excitement? Oh, he's gonna come take me out? Like, is there, do they not care about us at all? Do they care about us? That's for everyone to decide for themselves. I'm not gonna go say they do or they don't. I feel, though, definitely that as different as people are, snakes are just as different. Every single one has to be treated in a certain way, every single one acts a certain way, and the best way to really show you this, I guess, would be to show you some snakes, and then you can see if what I'm saying is nonsense or if you think there's truth to it. So first of all, I'm going to open up the drawer, I'm going to show you the snake, talk to you about it, and then I'll put the camera down and we'll watch me getting it out. But as you can see, this right here is Bo. I've had Bo since she was a baby. She's not always the calmest, but she's never been super strikey. She's bit me once, and it was during feeding time. She thought that my hand was food, and 
That's usually when most people do get bit. There's a term called stupid feeding errors just for that. But um, I'm going to go with my hand and I'm just going to touch her. And I don't worry about anything. I don't feel like she's going to bite me or anything. She's wondering a little bit what's going on. But she's, she's calm. She's not too tense. She's friendly. She's normal. She's kind of like normal. Or at least normal for one of my pet snakes. Okay. Next, we're going to look at Sahara. And, um, okay, she's a little bit around the water thing, but this is Sahara. She's very alert to what's going on. Avery, come here if you want. Okay? She just had a, a shed. So, her shed just came off perfectly in one piece. That's always a good sign. One of the most important things with keeping boas and keeping any animal is keeping them very clean. So I like to keep everything fresh water, fresh newspaper. The moment they pee or poop, let's clean that up and make sure that the humidity is right so that we have a perfect shed and all these things add to having a better snake. If the environment that they're kept in is clean, that usually makes them happier. So. Let's look at how Sahara interacts with me. Okay, see? I'm going to go in and touch her also, see? And she's fine. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take her out, just so I can show you. But, um, I can just go in and grab her. I only have one hand, so I'm going to put the camera back down and pull her out. So, this is Sahara. Let's switch sides with the camera. You want to come say hi? Come. Oh. So here we go. Sit nice. Say hi, everybody. Yeah, so now Avery's here. And um, I'm showing you Sahara. Sahara is a sweetheart. She's always been a sweetheart and she always will be. I totally feel comfortable with her playing with Avery. Yeah, gentle. Say hi. Say hi to Sahara. There you go, and be gentle. You want to say hi? You want to be gentle? Very good. Yeah, so Sahara's always been like this. She's always been very calm. I could take her and Right now, she's just looking around. She's, yeah, yeah, that's Annie. We'll take her out after, okay? Yeah. But we have to be a little bit more careful with Annie. Yeah. But anyway, so Sahara can be taken out. She kind of looks around, might want to go somewhere or whatever, but she's not uncomfortable being held at all, whether it's by me or somebody else. What will make a snake feel a lot more uncomfortable is not being held properly. So I made a video about how to hold snakes. But that's something totally different. Here I just want to show you personalities. Yeah, so Sahara's fine. She's friendly. She'll crawl around me. But she's my biggest boa. And I would have no fears letting Avery hang out with Sahara. Because Sahara doesn't look at us like a threat. She doesn't look at us like food. She just looks at us as really kind of nothing. Now, do I think that Sahara thinks I'm her friend? No, Sahara doesn't think that I'm her friend. But she knows that I'm not a threat. So even more than a snake thinking, oh, yay, it's my friend, which they don't really think. They think, oh, you know, it's that person or that thing coming to grab me. And when they grab me, I get to go outside, I get to explore, I get to look around. This is going to be, this is going to be fun. Um... And they enjoy this. They enjoy being able to stretch out, look look around and everything. Does that mean that they hate being in their home? No. Their home has everything that they need. And if they're not pacing back and forth or 
freaking out, rubbing their face against something. If they start doing that, then that tells you something is wrong with the home. Maybe it's too hot. Maybe it's too cold. Maybe they're hungry. Maybe something else is wrong. So you have to be very in touch with your animals, or at least I'm very in touch with my animals. The moment that something is wrong with any one of my animals, if it can be seen, if there's any signs, I'll be able to see it and know, hey, you know what, this one is starting to lose weight, let's give it a little bit more food. Hey, this one's starting to get chubby, let's give it a little bit less food. Uh, this one's not eating, why is it not eating? Is it stressed? Does it need somewhere to hide? Does it feel unsafe? Okay, this one, as you saw, Bo and Sahara don't have hides. Do they ever use hides? No. If I put hides in their home, they're never in them, so I figure, you know what, they don't really need a hide, and they're fine with that. Are they shedding perfectly? They should always be shedding perfectly. Uh, when, lots of the problems will be with temperatures that are too high, too low, or humidity that isn't humid enough, and too much humidity can cause issues too. So if all those conditions are right on, and you've spent enough time interacting with the snake, most of them should be like this. And then again, yeah, personalities come into play. There's totally different personalities. Now I'm going to put Sahara away. <laughs> and there's, there's rules that people say, you should do this, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do that. You know, maybe for them they shouldn't do certain things. And maybe for them they should do certain things. That might all change with you. You might have a totally different experience depending on your animal. Because what works for one doesn't work for all. Now, I'm going to show you Nova. So Nova is like Sahara. I've had Nova from the time she was born. She, she was born in my last place, but she was from my first litter. And um, she's been an absolute pleasure. I've also handled her and spent a lot of time with her. Right now she's deep in shed, so... Don't bother your snakes when they're in shed, you know, they, uh, they can not see as well and get agitated. So let's see what's going on. Is she going to be agitated? I'm going for her head. Is she going to strike at me or something? Let's see how she behaves. She's behaving fine. Want to say hi? Want to say hi, everybody? Say hi, everybody. Thank you. Okay, so. So it wasn't even in focus. That's terrible. So, as you can see, her eyes are glazed over. Her skin is glazed over. Avery, don't touch it. Okay. And, um. She's. She's okay. Now, somebody said recently, oh, she's in defensive pose. If she was in, like, defensive pose, striking pose, yeah, maybe she feels a little uncomfortable, so she's tucking in. You know, that makes her feel safe. Just because they're tucked in to feel safe doesn't mean that they're feeling aggressive or they want to bite you. I can dangle my fingers as much as I want around her face. I can touch her face. I can poke her face. And she'll always avoid. And it's... it's is it fear? I don't think she's really afraid of me, but she is... They will avoid confrontation. Snakes, naturally, they don't want to bother you. They don't want to strike you. The only reason that they will is because they think you're food or they're scared. If they're neither of those things, they're going to be totally fine. So now, I'm going to grab her out. Okay. So there, she's out. What about this? So I've had Nova, as I said, from the time she was born. You want to come closer? It's okay. And Nova's another one that I can hold, I can play with, I can let other people hold her. The other thing is, I like electro music, so I play a lot of electro music. I've played electro music all the time. Another thing people will say, you know, your snake should not be disturbed, you know, music and noises and all that stuff will disturb them. 
let me give you an example. Avery here is a baby. And some babies, they cannot sleep unless it's totally quiet. If it's super quiet, then they'll go to sleep. But if there's noise, then they won't go to sleep. With Avery, here, say hi. Gentle. Gentle. Very good. Hi. Hi. Okay. When Avery was a baby, I continued playing electro beats and when she went to sleep she went to sleep during electro beats she went to sleep when we were watching movies she'd go to sleep with the beats with the music so right from the beginning she got used to noise and because <laughs> yeah do you like music yeah 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 you won't, there's no music right now do you want music yeah. yeah she always wants music but we can't play music because music has to be copyright free and all that wonderful stuff, so no music. But anyways, uh, what? You wanted to go on your neck a little? Maybe. So, because Avery was conditioned to be used to music, it, it doesn't mean that that music bothers her now or it disturbs her sleep or did something bad to her. I desensitized her to the music from the time she was little. And now, when around 10, 11 o'clock comes, she can go to sleep, whether we're watching a movie, whether there's music, whether the lights are on, because I desensitized her to all those things. In the same way, snakes are like that too. If a snake has been in like a quiet environment its whole life and has never experienced noise and sound or anything, then to take that snake into an environment like that would make it feel very uncomfortable. But if your snakes, like mine, have heard my electro beats and noises and whatever all the time from the time that they were babies that abnormal sound or environments have become normal to them so for instance Nova has been around people from the time she was a baby Nova now she's she is getting a little bit anxious and I can feel that she's a little bit tense but she just wasn't feeling super supported and now she's kind of okay again. Now because because Nova is in shed and everything, Bye. I don't want to disturb her anymore. But really, like sh she's okay. She's not scared. She's not worried we're gonna hurt her, and she d is not aggressive at all. Oh, let me just pull out the next one. I'm not going to show them in the drawer anymore. I'm going to put this back here. Give us more space. And there we go. Okay. This is Aphrodite. I've had Aphrodite since she was born. She used to be really scared and very tense. You want to say hi? And her brother was super calm. But as they got older, her brother became a little bit more anxious and she became a lot more relaxed. Once again, she's super chill. I can take her around. She can be pet by people, held by people, and she really doesn't mind. She's never been aggressive, but whenever I have a snake from the time it's a baby, this is basically how they end up being. They end up having this kind of personality where they're totally chill. I can hold them. Other people can hold them. They can be around noise. They can be around whatever. They aren't head shy at all. See, they don't pull away. It's just trying to travel, trying to get around and look at things. Okay. What? Do you want to go? No. No, you want to stay here? Yeah. Okay, then stay here and be happy because we like it when you're happy. Okay. Bye. Bye. This is Sophie. Sophie, to me, out of all my boas, has the strongest personality. Does that mean she's aggressive? No. Is she as chill as Sahara and some of the others? No. Is she bitey? No, she's not bitey. But she definitely kind of knows what she wants. When she wants to do something, she wants to do it. And she doesn't want anything to really get in her way. She will go over here. She'll go over there. She'll do what she wants. And she's kind of like what I like to call like my strong, 
independent snake. Avery, you want to say hi? Gentle. Oh, no. Just touch her. Very nice. Hi. Hi, yeah. So Sophie, she she wants to go. She wants to go somewhere. She wants to do something. Is she nasty? Is she like, I don't like you? I don't like this? Not really. She's just more, I'm going to go over there. I want to go over there. I want to do that. And she just wants to do what she wants to do. And for her, if you're uncomfortable holding snakes, you don't want to hold her because she wouldn't sit nice for you. She, she wants to go, she wants to do things, she wants to be where she wants to be. So that's, that's how Sophie is. But she's still super chill. And she's in shed too right now. This is Annie. Annie was a rescue, basically. The people that had Annie... That's much nicer. Oh, I'm learning things as I'm doing these videos. So, this is Annie. Annie behaves totally differently than the other ones. Annie I do have to be careful with. And Annie I don't let other people hold. Annie's personality type is also not vicious. It's just very cautious. So when I first got Annie, she was, see, she noticed that, so when I first got Annie, Annie was all covered in mites, and she was in a room with three other snakes, one of them was dead, two of them were like insanely mite infested, one of them had a fully like swollen mouth and everything, and she was actually in the best condition out of all of them, but I took her and treated her and I've had her now for years. She produced my last litter. Beautiful snakes. She is a Annery Motley. And uh, this is not her home. I just put her in here for a bit. Yeah. Okay. Go stand there if you want to see. You want to see? Yes. Okay. Go up there. Now remember, if you have to go pee pee or poo poo, where do you go? To the toilet. Okay. Good. Let's get you up here. So, look. Annie's coming out. She's looking at Avery. I'm just going to grab her. And... Yeah, so and Annie seems to have gotten a lot better with me, actually, since after giving birth. So this, she's not really a, a defensive snake, but she definitely has a different personality than the other ones. Each one has their own personality. See, with her, she's a little bit uneasy. Like, she touches me, she tries to get away, she's licking like crazy, sensing everything, what's going on, what's happening. So she is not comfortable. And when I hold her, she feels a little uncomfortable. She feels a little stressed. So does this mean now that I can't hold her or I shouldn't hold her? No, this means that I should hold her more. I should spend more time with her until she realizes that, hey, guess what? There's nothing to worry about Matt holding me. It's fine and nothing bad happens. And then through lots and lots of that, eventually she'll be okay with being handled. Will she ever get to the point where I can say, here, anybody can hold her, let's take her for a walk downtown or something? Probably not, so I would never do that with a snake like this. It's important to understand that what is okay with one snake is not okay with every snake. What is okay for me to do with Sahara doesn't mean I can go do it with Annie, doesn't mean you can go do it with one of your snakes. You have to know each one of your snake's personality. You have to know how your snake behaves under different circumstances, what they like. You know, some snakes really like being outside. Some snakes hate being outside. 
most of them like being outside, but sometimes, you know, one of them will get outside and they're like, they're out in the open and they're just like, I don't like this. This is scary. I'm uncomfortable. So, yeah. Did you go, did you pee pee yourself? You made, oh, Avery. Okay, so as you saw already with the boas, they don't have hides. They're just chilling. They're doing their own thing. And they're mostly pretty calm. Now when we go to ball pythons, see it's got a home. Where's the ball python? It is hiding. Yep. There it is. Let's go to the next ball python home. What's it doing? Oh, it, it has all this space. You keep it in a tiny drawer. You, but like you figure, it's in a tiny drawer. Where does it want to be? Oh, it's hiding. Okay. Let's check the next ball python. It knocks its water everywhere, but what's it doing? It's hiding. Why? Because in general, ball pythons are quite afraid, or they're naturally more afraid than boas. But just because a ball python is hiding doesn't mean that it has a personality that's terrified and whatever. Lots of them can be pretty chill. I can go in, reach, hello, no problem. Yay. Okay. Now personalities again. There's this guy here named Sonder. He stays in a smaller bin because he feels more comfortable in a small bin. Sometimes, and now we're talking about something totally different, but sometimes a snake needs to be in a smaller home to feel more comfortable. If I take Sonder and I put him in a larger home, any time that I reach in or anything, he'll freak out, he'll be striking at me, he'll be ready to attack. And I keep him in a smaller bin, and that kind of, it works for him. He's still, like, he is still tense. He's still scared. That's his personality. He is a little bit more tense. Did I raise him since a baby? No. So do I know how he was treated before or what conditions he was in before? No, and without that, it becomes a lot harder to work with the animal, to tame the animal, because for years it's been in certain conditions that I had no control over. Here's a bigger drawer. This home is huge compared to that other drawer. Where is the snake? It's hiding. See? This is Xenon, and her specifically is an extra scaredy cat. Is she aggressive? Lots of the time when they're scared, they get aggressive. But what is she? Does she get aggressive? No. She runs away because she's a scaredy cat. So she's trying to get away. She's freaking out. Oh, no, no, I got to get away. It, and that's her personality. It's not confrontational. She's just doesn't like really being held and grabbed a lot, but when you hold her and take her out, she tries to get away, and then let's see how she behaves. See, this is Xenon. She's okay. She doesn't like being handled. And she is a little bit more head shy, but to tame it out of them, that's usually what I do. I go straight for the face. I play with their face. If they're okay with having their hand, head handled and played with and pet, then eventually they're going to be okay with everything. Well, let's put her away. Here's another one. Um, never handle green tree pythons. Uh, don't don't touch them. They're very irritable. They'll bite you very easily. So Don't don't handle a snake 24 hours after you feed it. I So let's let's break two of those rules. I just fed this guy Last night, so he just had a rat or she just had a rat now. Let's just see if I can Handle her or how she's going to behave. Calm down. Mm. 
So now you can see the lump from the meal she just had yesterday. So I just fed her. So she should be more irritable than usual. But she's chill. So uh, I messed up the audio recording for this part of the video, so I'm just doing voiceover. So it might not uh, match up with the rest, but whatever. So yeah, I'm, I'm handling green pythons. I can reach in at night and grab them. I can reach into their home and grab them. And they'll never, neither of them, I only have two, but neither of them will strike at me or show aggression. And I think that most of this is because of handling them and touching them like this from the time they were small from a point where lots of people will say don't even really handle them uh i think that most people shouldn't handle them because if you're rough or something you can hurt them um but i handled them from the moment i got them and continue to and this is the other one and they both behave super tame and I attribute that to putting that time in when they were babies and handling them. If I wouldn't have done that, then I could definitely see me putting my hand in them being scared and striking at me because they hadn't had that interaction. I think one of the key things to keep snakes very tame... Oh, well, that's the other one. Uh, the, one of the biggest things that keeps them tame is the time that you put in from the time they're born. Sometimes even just a baby coming out of an egg will be nasty and in a few minutes that nastiness will take be taken right out. I'll post a link to a video where you'll actually see that happen. But with the green tree pythons they have So some now the main nasty, reason nasty, almost like that I attribute teeth. my snakes so being so chill to me, it's even more important to hold come them if you want. When they're small. You want to come? Come. To make sure that when they get older, they can. It's because from the time they're little, I handle them. So, once again, yesterday was feeding day. So, this this is probably like the worst time to be handling them and whatever. But used to it, and they get. There's a baby. And it was okay just fed yesterday. And, and I'm putting my hand in. Older and I'm reaching. That they do. And I'm holding him. Okay, and let's see his little lump, see the little lump, yeah, so I'm handling him the day after he was fed. Yes. So, you want to come sit with me? Yeah. Okay. So, it's not that, once again, I'm not saying go and do all the things that people tell you not to do, and I'm not trying to go around and do things that people tell me not to do. But because of the time that I've put into my snakes, and how well I know each of them individually, I know what I can and can't do with almost each and every one of my snakes. So for anyone to say to me, oh, you shouldn't do that or you can't do that, I respect that. That's fine. That's understandable. Maybe you don't feel comfortable doing that. Maybe, you know, when I go downtown with my comma snake, and 20 people end up petting her and holding her 
Do I think that my snake really enjoys that? Maybe not, but does my snake hate it? Does it put my snake in a terrible place? Does my snake feel terribly uncomfortable? No. That snake doesn't. And if it did, I wouldn't put it really in that position. And I know lots of snakes would not feel comfortable doing that. But with specific ones, I know what they are and aren't comfortable with. Just like with those green tree pythons. Um, in general, lots of them are nippy. Lots of them get scared. Mine aren't. And it's not that I got magical green tree pythons or something. It's that I put that time in with them. Just like with this baby. So it's the day after I fed it. Let me see the little lump. Eh, they're still eating like pinky rats. So day after I fed this one, took it out, held it, touched its face. See, from the time it's little, I do this thing where I spend a lot of time playing with their face, touching their face, petting their face, getting them totally used to being handled, and if anything, almost getting used to being. A little bit bothered because it's not it's not really nice to bother a snake's face but after doing it enough they get totally used to it and after time they eventually start to even like it once they get to that point they grow up and they stay calm they stay nice they stay used to being handled and touched because from the time they were little I've played with their faces so much that when somebody else plays with their face. There's another one. I just fed it. I just pulled it out of its bin and it, it just ate yesterday. You can see a little lump. Maybe, maybe not. But um, I can do this with each and every single one of my babies. I can just go and feed them. After I feed them the next day I can grab them. I can hold them because when they were born I took a timer. So I have a little timer. I set it to 15 minutes and then I time and I'll spend 15 minutes with each of my babies one at a time and then I'll do the next one and then I'll do the next one now how many people really do that you know I'm sure that lots of people spend time with some of their babies or people handle their pet their favorite one and I think that there's this doesn't mean you gotta go and handle every snake a ton or spend so much time with each snake but I, I truly believe that there is a perfect balance of giving a snake their space letting them do their own thing and most of the time my snakes are not being handled they're not coming out they're not outside I literally have them on schedules so I know which one ate when and once I know a snake has been fed five days after it's been fed six days after it's been fed I'll take it outside to the park and see if it goes poop that way it makes my cleaning job a little bit easier. Yeah, you can you can pet her. So I get used to their feeding and poop schedules to make my own job easier. And then with the babies, once a week I spend some time handling them and making sure that when they're ready to go to someone, they're going to be eating frozen thawed and they're going to be able to be handled, they're going to be able to be pet and like bothered even and they're not going to react in a negative way to that but that requires a little bit more effort a little bit more time but once you have put that time into something then you know what it can and can't do you have to know the limits and capabilities of each of your animals and since I've worked with most of my snakes since they were this small I've been collecting them for about seven years I know each snake. So do snakes feel? They definitely do feel things. They just, they don't feel complex emotions. They don't feel love. They don't feel hate. But they definitely like things. They definitely don't like things. If I was to go grab this snake and just pinch it really hard, it would hurt it. It wouldn't like that. And I wouldn't want to do that to this snake. Uh, if I come and I pet its face, does it like that? Uh, maybe not a ton right now. But over time, eventually it will get used to that and it will start to like that. And there are some that really do. So, that's my little rant, my little two cents. But you have to figure out what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And everybody, to every single person, that's different. If you have never worked with snakes, if you haven't 
handle the pile or had a ton of experience or just have experience with one snake, you really have no right to be telling people that keep like 50 plus snakes what snakes do or how snakes are because experience does play a big key in things. And I might have differing opinions on snakes than some other keeper that has more snakes than me or less snakes than me and someone else might have different opinions we might both have different opinions does it mean I'm right and they're wrong? No. Does it mean they're right and I'm wrong? No. Either of us could be right, either of us could be wrong and that's not really what matters. What matters is that the snakes are safe, that the snakes are happy and that the people around them are too. So for me I take what to some people would be considered certain risks to me I don't find it a risk at all because I know that snake and for someone else that could be a risk it could be something that they would never do or never want to do and that's totally fine with them and I respect that but we all have to make our own decisions and choices so in conclusion just like all us people we all have different feelings we all have different ideas emotions things that get us going and uh, snakes are the same way there are certain snakes that really like certain things there are certain snakes that really don't like certain things uh, I think one of my biggest problems is just people kind of putting snakes in this category where it's like they don't feel anything they don't enjoy anything what's the point of you taking them outside that just stresses them out or uh, they don't get anything out of that and to me I, I don't think that at all. I think that they enjoy being outside, they enjoy interacting and being around different people. As long as the people hold them properly, treat them respectfully, yeah. then everything should be okay. And before I let anyone hold a snake, I tell them, okay, this is what you're going to do, this is how you should do it, and I won't let somebody hold my snake if they're scared of it. Because if they're scared, they might do something wrong, and then there could be a problem, and it, whose fault would that be? it would be their fault but it would also be my fault for letting them hold it so at the same time because of being able to interact with so many people and teach them about snakes I've seen firsthand almost every time that I've gone out with the snakes there'll be like three people that were afraid of them that are now no longer afraid of them next thing you know they're watching videos about them learning about them and then they're like hey Matt can I get a snake off you? And I'll be like, are you sure? Here, let me send you this guide. And I'll send them a full guide that they can read and learn everything about it before they get a snake off of me. And um, I think that that's important. It's important to teach them how to take care of the animal. Say bye-bye. Oh, not there. Bye, everybody. Oh, yeah. Like, subscribe, and share. Show that you care.